What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out a WrestleMania 31 retrospective. Last great WrestleMania. You know what? I've thought about this before. Uh WrestleMania 31, in my personal opinion, was probably one of the last WrestleManias where one, they didn't overstack the card, so it wasn't like a two-night epic. And two, it just felt like a WrestleMania. I, I feel like that's one of the last WrestleManias that felt like a WrestleMania. The main event ended off in an exciting way. You was excited to see what happened on Monday, what was going to happen on Monday Night Raw. And it, it, I don't know, it just, it, it worked. Granted, there were some things I didn't like about this WrestleMania. Obviously, a lot of people didn't like the finish with Steam and Triple H. And then there were some good things I liked, like the match between Seth Rollins and Randy Orton was fantastic. I want to say Daniel Bryan ended up winning the Intercontinental Championship in a very good ladder match, I want to say. It, it, it had some highs, it had some lows, but it was definitely one of the last, like, WrestleManias, in my opinion, that felt like a WrestleMania in a sense of it wasn't too long, it wasn't two nights, it just, it, it worked. Not to say the recent years didn't work. I know I did like last year's night two, mainly because I, I was enjoying, you know, how the triple threat match ended with Edge, uh, Roman, and Daniel Bryan at the time. I thought that was pretty good. I thought that was a pretty good way to end off WrestleMania. But in there has been some highlights in, in recent WrestleManias, but they haven't compared to this one. And WrestleMania 30 kind of really shocked the world. So this one was a, a nice follow-up. So let's get into this video by none other than Superkick Studios. Y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to them. I'm going to like the video even before checking it out because I know it's going to be some dope stuff. And let's get right into this bad boy. 2015 was WWE level buffoonery turned up to 11. Trolling the fans by putting shattered dreams right after fan favorite Daniel yep. Bryan was eliminated. Seth Rollins's architect being leaked for the entire world to see and the roman reigns experiment blowing up in the company's face mm -hmm. causing people to cancel their network subscriptions there was a lot wrong with this year but without a doubt one of the biggest bright spots was wrestlemania 31 the next the pacing the placement sure of the matches happened, yeah. the larger than life moments the arena, the aesthetic of how the show looked as it turned from scorching heat to the setting California sun. Mm -hmm. When all was said and done, no wrestling fan would ever forget where they were on this night. So let's go back to 2015 and take a look back at WrestleMania 31. I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed this uh, pay-per-view, this particular WrestleMania. I think, this, show kicks I think this was the first WrestleMania I actually watched on the wwe network i had the wwe network at the time i want to say i could be wrong off in the santa clara sun with aloe black singing america the beautiful then ll cool j <clears throat> kicks off the show runs through the history of wrestlemania and ties in the new age of social media the theme for this wrestlemania was the wwe mm, network i think i did enough, i think i did not have canceled it canceled just yet they shoehorned it into the graphics the stage and the opening video but the continuity was very well done so we start the show and Michael Cole tells us that it'll be a night forever etched in history. A night where legends will be born. Levi's Stadium was buzzing and ready to go. We kick off the show in one of the best ways we could have. With mm -hmm. a seven man ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Yep, 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 yep. Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler, Bad News Barrett, Stardust, R-Truth who probably thought this was the Royal Rumble. Luke Harper, rest in peace. Rest in peace. The man who ended the previous year's WrestleMania on top, Daniel Bryan. The match started and it was beautiful chaos. Rewatching it back, I realized just how good this match truly was. It was. The pacing, the spots, the people in it, everyone did so well. Right off the hop, Ambrose hits a dive onto the outside, so does Truth. Stardust hits a falling star, and then Dean Ambrose just casually saunters up a 16 foot ladder and he takes out everyone except for our Truth. So we're less than two minutes into this match and so much has already happened. But this was just the starting point. Yeah. Daniel Bryan, who had a surgically repaired neck, was going crazy. Hitting flying knees, taking ladder shots to the head. Code, I mean Stardust, brought out his custom bedazzled ladder, yeah. calling it the exo Exmospheric Starboard. Sometimes you gotta be stopped. And then, <laughs> Bad News Barrett had two doses of bad news for Stardust. First he broke his ladder, and then he chucked him off a ladder with the suplex. 
Looking Ooh. back, the biggest question on my mind isn't if RJ <clears throat> was mentally stable, but how Wade Barrett didn't become a world champion in the WWE. Yeah, that that's that's a thing that a lot of people or, you know, always wanted to know. Like, people like this gimmick, the bad news gimmick he got over. WWE didn't really want to catapult him past the big card. Oh, yeah. You. Just as the place oh, yeah. settled down in this match, John it became Cena. GG for Dean Ambrose. Power bomb from the inside of the yeah. ring. Woo! Ladder on the outside. Ladder breaks, and so does Ambrose. That's it. He yeah. was going straight to a hospital. So everyone was out, and there were two men left. Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler, both having a headbutt parade at the top of the ladder, and by the end of it, Ziggler fell, and Daniel Bryan was left mm -hmm. on his own. Unhooks the IC title, and we start off WrestleMania 31 yep. the same way we ended WrestleMania 30. The crowd yelling yes at the top of their lungs, and Daniel Bryan once again a champion. And that was good. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with my camera. Camera's tripping out right now. If you guys notice, it's like getting darker. Like I don't know what's going on, but uh, that was dope. Uh, starting off WrestleMania with Daniel Bryan winning, crowd chanting yes. That's how you do it. Got the crowd hype. I was definitely excited. Enjoyable opening match. This match was so much fun. No bullshit. No filler. Just consistent action. Wherever you looked, something was going on. Each competitor had something creative to do in the match. Whether it was a high spot or just acting high like R-Truth, it was just yeah. well executed. And after this, it was Snake versus Snake. Alright, uh, I had to adjust the brightness on my light. Maybe it'll stop doing what it's doing on the camera right now. Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton. Randy Orton had turned on Seth Rollins by <clears throat> infiltrating the authority, gaining Seth Rollins' trust, mm -hmm. and at the last moment putting the middle fingers in the air, and turning on Rollins. Yep. But it was all Rollins' fault for making this a mess. Curb stomping Orton into steel steps, and now Orton was coming for revenge. Good These feud. came out, and they put on a solid match. But the thing here was Seth Rollins was in his phase of being the biggest scum on God's green earth, coming out with the Cruiserweight division and having them do his dirty work. This match was fun, and it had some near falls. Randy Orton was cleaning house, and there was even a point where Rollins ate an RKO, and we thought that it might have been it. But Rollins kicked out. And little did we know what mm. we were in for. Seth Easily one of the best RKO transitions of all time. And for this to be the next matchup after we had a great ladder match to start things off, I was like, okay, they are really showing out. This is this is pretty good. I was interested in this feud, and the right person won, but we just didn't know how the night was going to end. Seth Rollins has Orton measured for a stomp. Orton flings Rollins up with his trap muscles, sends him flying, and catches him with a picture-perfect RKO. And that was it. Seth Rollins became posterized for the rest yeah. of the time. And at this point, it looked like it was game over for Seth Rollins. Even though he had the Money in the Bank contract, it looked like we weren't going to be seeing him anytime soon. But now it was time for a literal dream match. Yeah. The unthinkable. Sting was in the WWE. It was going to be WCW versus the WWF. WCW's final soldier versus the King of Kings. Mm -hmm. A match in my wildest dreams I never thought that I would see. Ever. The story going in was that Sting cost the authority their job, and now he was going to fight Triple H. Not because he wanted to fight for WCW, but because he was tired of Triple H's bullshit. The build, pretty subpar if I'm being honest, but seeing Sting in a WWE ring, no words. Yeah. So Sting's intro hits, and out he comes with the drummers behind him, and he was ready for Triple You H saw the sign that said, 1 and 0, oh, Sting. I wish, my guy. Oh, I wish. Oh, my God. If we could just turn back the hands of time. If we would have got that, then I, I'm willing to bet probably that next year we would have probably got Undertaker versus Sting. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps now just thinking about it. Triple H, as the California sun cast a shadow in the ring. The so the Terminator are Terminator fucking Triple H. That shit. What the hell? Arrives from the bottom of the stage, Triple H paying respect to Arnold. Yeah. And it was time. The match begun, <laughs> you wouldn't believe that Sting was 55 years old. He was yeah. moving around the ring. He was moving was pretty well. Everyone was chanting, you still got it. But I gotta talk about JBL's boner for the WWE in this match. The man at every point was just shitting on Sting, saying that he played in the minor leagues and making fun of WCW. So as the match wore on, it just got more and more annoying. But as the match did wear on, things just got crazier and crazier. 
Sting had Triple H in a Scorpion Deathlock, and then out came DX. So 55-year-old Sting just casually goes to the, <laughs> the back to the outside and takes out everyone. Yeah. But as soon as he got back into the ring, he ate a pedigree, and he kicked, kicked out. Mm. Just when you thought things couldn't get any more crazy, out comes the NWO. Kevin Nash, Hulk Hogan, and Scott Hall. The same group that Sting rebelled against in WCW. But that aside, they were here to help Sting. It was the Monday Night War, only it wasn't 1998, mm -hmm. it was 2015. Levi's Stadium was just having so much fun. Yeah. And then, Triple H looked for old reliable, his sledgehammer. Uh, I'm not sure what was going on in the his video. outside as the two groups are brawling, and out of nowhere comes Shawn Michaels. It's a sweet chin music on Sting, but that's still not enough. So Triple H calls for his sledgehammer. Billy Gunn hands it to him, and he's got Sting dead to rights. But the NWO had Sting's back. Hall hands Sting a bat, and the odds were even. Sting breaks Triple H's sledgehammer, goes for a stinger splash, but when he's going for a second one, Triple H catches him with the head of the sledgehammer, and that's it. Yeah. Triple H gets the win. And afterwards, everybody just became best friends. Like, bro, mm -hmm. was I watching the WWE or was I watching Hannah Montana? Yeah, I, I oh, that was a low point for me. I'm like, bro. You guys didn't need that win. It's like WCW is done. You didn't need that win. Why bring this guy in just to have him fucking lose at WrestleMania? Come on, bro. That's still one of the most annoying booking decisions. It's Triple H for you, bro. Triple H at that time. Sting and Triple H shake hands and the clock was turned back. I wasn't watching the Monday Night War because I was a baby. But I felt this. I knew how big of a moment this was. The two companies who fought tooth and nail coming into the ring and giving the world one final showcase. Did Triple H need to win this? No. Probably not. <laughs> Does it really matter in retrospect? I don't think so. This match was fun. It's what it should have been. The wrestling kept to a minimal. All about the legends and turning back time. We go from these legends to legends backstage. Roddy Piper, Ricky Steamboat, Pat Patterson, Bret Hart, and Ric Flair all congratulating the new IC champion, Daniel Bryan. They were hoping just as much as the next guy that Daniel Bryan would be the one to bring prestige back to mm -hmm. that title. They were having woo-offs, chanting yes, and then Ron Simmons just stepped to everybody, and you all know what he said. Yep. Musical performance, nice. The theme song was good. I felt like it gave it that WrestleMania vibe. Upbeat, not too much else to add here. And next up, it was the only women's match on the show. Paige and AJ, the two women who one year ago were competing for the Divas title, now against the Bellas. Nikki Bella, the Divas champion, and her sister Brie. As always, horny Jerry Lawler on commentary, and the crowd was pretty silent at this point. Yeah. But, you know, respect where it's due. This was an easy watch. It wasn't your average two-minute squash. It was a competitive match. It was fast-paced. But I think the highlight of the match was the guy in the front row with the sign that read, Nikki, I'll give you babies. <laughs> you know, our boy John Cena, he's, he's not scared of much, but for some reason, reproduction seems to be his weakness. <laughs> At the end of it, no children were produced, but AJ and Paige produced a W. We honored the Hall of Fame class, which was actually pretty stacked, if I'm being honest. The likes of Rikishi, Alundra, Blaze, Macho Man, and Kevin Nash. Mm -hmm. Once that was over, it was time for one of the featured matchups. John Cena, the ultimate American Patriot versus yeah. Rusev, the ultimate foreign heel, and Vladimir Putin's son. Yeah, pretty much. United States Championship. And can I just say that at this time, it seemed like Rusev was going to be the next big dominating monster. Mm -hmm. The story leading up was Rusev wanted Cena to admit that Russia was better than America. Uh, but John Cena... Anytime you go with an American, Russian, or American, any foreign country storyline, I can tell you now, <laughs> they're not... They're, it would be interesting if they pulled a swerve and had Rusev win, but nah, you already knew it was... John Cena, too, in the match? Yeah, you knew John Cena was winning this. Wouldn't have Rusev disrespect this country. Wouldn't let him cheat and diminish the U.S. title. Cena forced his way into a U.S. title match, and it was Lana who agreed to give it to him. So Rusev's entrance starts, and the USSR national anthem plays, and Lana, well, Lana. Oh, my God. Don't do this, bro. If you say that you didn't search this up at one point or another, you are nothing but a liar. I don't want to hear it. Lana was dropping Joss to the floor like she was Manny Pacquiao, and then out came Rusev in a tank. A fucking tank. That was pretty yes, cool. Yes, you heard right. 
Rusev came out on a tank. Like, this was a war zone, waving the Russian flag, even though he's Bulgarian. Yeah. And apparently, Rusev took Lana to Moshka Town inside the tank, so... Respect where it's due. So oh, wow. And hold on, wait, 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 wait. I didn't even... Hold on. Huge WWE star Lana Rhea, she had sex with Rusev in the tank at WrestleMania 31 ahead of the match. Hey, that's a good way to relieve some stress, if you know what I mean. Inside the tank, so respect where it's due. So next it's Cena and his video package is all about America and how the US was able to develop the genius of man. Sports, environment, landmarks, miracle on ice, everything you could think of. By the end of this, me as a Canadian, even I felt like I was American. <laughs> Chance of USA, 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 and out comes John China, I mean Cena, and this match got underway. And it was actually pretty fun. The crowd throughout was chanting, let's go Lana, but Cena and Rusev were the ones that the commentators wanted us to focus on as hard as that was. Leva Stadium was cheering for the foreign heel and booing the face. Yeah, they were. Whenever Cena would hit a big move, Rusev would just stand in his face, screaming at Cena in what I assume is Bulgarian. But this man Rusev on this night would not be denied. He survived an STF until Lana chucks in her high heel to cause a distraction. Johnny Boy was calling spots so loud you can hear them in India. Later in the match, he locks in the accolade, the move that only Cena had come close to fully breaking out of. Of course, coming in, Rusev hadn't been pinned or submitted. Mm -hmm. But come on, you, you know do. who this is. We're talking yeah. about Super Cena. Yeah. He breaks out of the accolade, drops toe holds, and then Lana comes to the apron, causes a distraction. But instead, she gets pounced to the floor, AA from Cena, and that's all she wrote. Yep. John Cena was the new US champion, just like it was 2004. Only this time, he elevated the US title to heights that it hadn't seen. I will say this. The John Cena US Open Challenge, that was good. That was good for that belt. I will say this. I didn't like Rusev losing, but I knew it was going to happen. But the belt did get elevated when John Cena had it. I will say that. In a while. That match was now over, and the California sun was slowly setting on the night. Outcome Triple H and Stephanie McMahon announcing an attendance number, which probably wasn't right, and yeah. boasting about how good they were. And then out comes the people's champion, Champ. The mm -hmm. Rock. Makes an entrance so long that it would make The Undertaker tear up, pumps up the crowd, and tells Triple H that he left his balls in Stamford, Connecticut. So Triple H is about to square up to The Rock, but Stephanie gets in the way. Slaps Rock in the face, and what's he going to do? Hit a woman live on pay-per-view? Come on, not 1998 anymore. <laughs> so Rock goes to the outside, mm -hmm. and there seated is UFC Women's Champion, the undefeated Ronda Rousey. At that time, Along yep. with her, Shayna Baszler, Jessamine Duke, and Marina Shafir. So, Rock goes to the outside. Ronda hops the barricade, makes her way into the ring, and two worlds were colliding. WWE and UFC. Mm -hmm. Rock unloads on Triple H. Uh, uh, not, not like that. <laughs> and Ronda takes out Stephanie. <clears throat> Man, they really teased us with Ronda and Rock versus Triple H and Stephanie. That match would have been one of the most anticipated matchups ever. If they would have actually did it? Oh, yeah, that would have been fantastic. Could you imagine? So Rock and Ronda had their mania moments in the ring. Meanwhile, backstage during this time. And, bro, the shirt, the tank she had on, over 9,000. Fantastic. Beautiful. Delicious. Another mania moment was being set up. We'll get to that one in just a bit. Next up, it was time for the Reaper to return. Mm -hmm. The man who instilled fear into WWE fans for over 20 years, The Undertaker. Going against the man who called himself the new face of fear, Bray Wyatt. A year after his legendary undefeated streak was snapped, Undertaker was coming back. Bray was just poking the bear, poking the bear, and he wanted Undertaker back. Mm -hmm. But Taker on the road to WrestleMania didn't shy away. He even set Bray's rocking chair on fire. So both men come out, amazing entrances for mm -hmm. both of them, and then they go back and forth. Bray had apparently injured himself in rehearsal, but you wouldn't be able to tell. This match was actually pretty fast-paced looking mm -hmm. back at it. Most of that was actually Bray Wyatt. Undertaker was still out here proving that he still had it. A choke slam to Wyatt followed by a tombstone, and Wyatt kicks out. Sister Abigail to Undertaker, Undertaker kicks out too. So Bray rises up into his skin. That was a cool moment. The Undertaker rise, Bray doing this little crab walk. That was pretty cool. Spider pose, and Undertaker does his iconic setup. Tombstone, one, two, three. 
and Taker was 22 and 1 at WrestleMania. Could Wyatt have used the win? Yeah. No doubt. Bray Wyatt would have benefited big time from this win. I mean, the year before, he lost to Cena, and now he took an L to The Undertaker. Here's the thing. Uh, maybe unpopular opinion, but I do think if Bray Wyatt would have been one of the individuals to beat The Undertaker instead of Brock, I would have been okay with that. I would have. It's like the passing of the torch. Passing of the torch from a one dark character to a new fresh dark character that instantly puts him over. That's just my opinion. Taker. Trying to build him up as this mystical, supernatural cult leader, it would have been the perfect tipping point to give him the win here, but what happened, happened. That's one of the biggest problems with this WrestleMania, if there are any, mm -hmm. is a ton of up-and-coming stars lost to the vets. Rollins vs. Orton, Orton wins. Rusev vs. Cena, Cena wins. Taker vs. Wyatt, Taker wins. But there was one more generational clash still um, left to happen. Mm. That was going to be WWE's golden boy, Roman Reigns, and the beast, Brock Lesnar. After being pushed and pushed and pushed, would WWE Push finally to the moon. convert on their project that was Roman Reigns? We all remember 2015 and the clusterfuck that was the Royal Rumble, regarded as the worst Royal Rumble of all time, to yep. the point where they even booed The Rock. Look how confused this man looks that he's getting booed. Yeah. So heading into WrestleMania, fans weren't exactly on Roman Reigns' side. Some people, they were there for the ride for sure. But a majority, no. Anyone but Roman. Pushed too hard, too soon. What added more fuel to the fire was him saying that he would only entertain criticism from people that actually mattered. Leading up to Mania, this build between Lesnar and Reigns was hot garbage was the last <laughs> we saw before lesnar and reigns met at wrestlemania big contract signing maybe a pull apart brawl reigns playing mind games hell maybe even something set on fire nope we saw two grown men playing tug of war with the world championship yeah that that right there is is top tier storytelling yeah WWE <laughs> was persistent with this reigns push and out he came shoved a fan out of the way on his way to the ring like, which idiot decided that the man who caused people to cancel their network subscriptions should go through and saunter on down through a crowd of thousands and everything would just go off without a hitch? Nothing no. wrong would happen. Like, fam, I hate to break it to you, but you're dumb as hell. So, Reigns somehow made it to the ring without dying. He hits his little punch to the ring mat and he lights up the sky. And this aesthetic, it was beautiful. No, it was one of my cool. my favorite parts about this WrestleMania was how amazing the sky looked when Lesnar and Reigns were about to come out. The California sun was setting, and out came Brock Lesnar. The same Brock Lesnar who had dominated the past year in the WWE. Beat Undertaker's streak, killed Cena at SummerSlam, mm -hmm. but could this young upstart beat the veteran? And right out of the gate, Brock hits a suplex and an F5, and the crowd is cheering, just hoping yep. that Reigns gets squashed. Yep. But then Reigns starts fighting back, and they booed, and they booed, oh, yeah. and they booed. But Lesnar catches Reigns. Oh, they were booing like crazy. I was like, yo, this is done. This is dead. <laughs> Clothesline into a German. But Reigns, even though he was eating punishment, was just smiling at Lesnar. And then Lesnar starts to dominate and the crowd is chanting, this is awesome. And of course, cue the comeback and the booze Reigns. Oh, out. yeah. Man, WWE really had their hands tied behind their back here. Like, give Reigns the title and you risk having the arena set on fire. Yeah. Or you put everything to waste and you have him lose. Yeah. A second F5 and still Roman kicked out. And this is where the pace of the match completely changed. Mm -hmm. Lesnar takes off his gloves, hits suplexes, and a third F5. Just like how he beat the Undertaker streak in 2014. But Reigns kicked, kicked out. out. <laughs> Lesnar shoved into the ring post on the outside and he's busted open. Mm -hmm. Wearing a crimson mask. These two go back into the ring, and Lesnar eats a Superman punch, but he's not down. A second one, and he's still not down. Third one, and it finally gets Lesnar on the mat. So Reigns hits two straight spears, and thankfully for the crowd, at two and a half, Brock kicked out. Yeah. Nobody had burned the premises just yet. Mm -hmm. After that, Reigns measures up for another Superman punch, but he gets caught in an F5. F5. Beautiful. Lesnar can't cover because he's just so tired. Michael Cole on commentary asks, who can capitalize? And just then, mm. the second coming hits, Seth Rollins sprints down to the ring. Fantastic. When I saw this happening, I lost my shit. 
Mind you, he's a heel. But this was the best cash-in. One of the best cash-ins ever, bro. And it happened at WrestleMania. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Bay was home alone, surveys the scene, and he's doing it. He's cashing in the money in the bank. This match was now a triple threat match. Who expected this? Rollins knocks Reigns out of the ring, curb stomp to Lesnar, but he knows that's not enough. Goes for another one, but Lesnar catches him into an F5 position. Mm -hmm. Reigns comes back in, hits a spear on Lesnar, knocks Rollins out of the F5. Rollins hits a stomp on Reigns. One, two, two three. three. The new WWE World Heavyweight Champion was Seth Rollins. Yep. Look how shocked this arena was. Yep. We thought he was down and dead after the Randy match, but he returned. Return to pull off the heist, heist of, of the, the century. century. Yep. You know how earlier in the video I talked about how another Mania moment was being planned backstage? Well, this, this is was it. that moment. That's it. Up until the Rousey and Rock segment, Reigns was supposed to win here. He even had family in the crowd, but they decided to go with Rollins, who gave Reigns the thank you so much before he pins him, and he won it. No one in their right mind expected Oh, this. man, this was no great. One. A genuine shock, and Seth great. Rollins was the new... WWE World Heavyweight Best Champion. decision they did. The Pyro went off and the world belonged to Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns, his former Shield buddy, laid perfectly in the center of the ring. Mm -hmm. And this moment, man, iconic. The first person to ever cash in at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. And not just that, in the main event, event. of yep. WrestleMania. Never been done before, will never be done again. The show was just amazing. This was the last time I watched a WrestleMania and when I hit the power off button on my remote, I knew that I watched something special. Yeah. The moments in the show are what made it. The NWO, DX, Rusev's entrance, the RKO, Ambrose going crazy in the ladder match, Rock and Ronda Rousey, Rollins at the end. The pacing for this show was brilliant. All the top stars were on the card and there wasn't much filler, if any. What the show was big for was an introduction to new superstars. It felt like the next generation, even though they didn't win, was on its way but they fumbled the bag. Hmm. WrestleMania 31 had such low expectations going in. People were boycotting the Reigns experiment. Yep. Daniel Bryan <laughs> wasn't in the position that a lot of people wanted him in. The US title match didn't seem like anything special, and the show felt like it was going to be a dud after we had just watched WrestleMania 30 the previous year, mm -hmm. but it over-delivered. None of this two-night bullshit, one night for your... I just said this, bro. The two-night, I get it while they're doing it. They want to get everybody on the card. Everybody gets an extra payday. But at the same time, that one night... And I'm not talking about the one night, 10-hour special. I'm talking about the one night, you know what I'm saying, a decent list, nothing too crazy. It worked. It just worked. For me, I preferred it, but I understand why they do the two nights. I get it. Biggest stars to shine... One night for you to go balls to the wall. Everything about this mania was extremely well executed. The high spots, the match placement, the beautiful arena, and even the graphics. In my opinion, this is the last great WrestleMania. But my biggest question to all of you guys is, is this a... I can agree, man. I can definitely agree this is one of the better WrestleManias, man. The last great one, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people's opinion as well. So comment down below. Let me know. Do you guys agree? Was WrestleMania 31 one of your one of the last great WrestleManias? Or do you feel like there were some other ones after 31 that um, were either better than this, in your opinion, or um, at least come close to this, in your opinion? I, me personally, I just think as a whole, it, it was one of the greater ones. One of the greater ones that I can literally go back and watch and have fond memories of there's not too many other wrestlemanias after that i have fond memories of that i do so appreciate all love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace